As mentioned in the last lesson, the content browser is the first stop in working with content in UEFN. On the left side of the content browser is the folder view, which shows all of the items inside of the project. Any content you add for a project will go into its content folder. The Fortnite and Epic folder have pre-existing assets to use, like textures, materials, creative devices, props, and more. Head into the Fortnite folder and open the galleries. These have props that fit a theme in them for your use in your project. You can pick a gallery by holding left-click while over it, then move your mouse around the viewport to drag it around your world. Let go of left-click to place it. If you wanted to delete some items from the gallery, you can do it one at a time by selecting an item and clicking the delete key. You can select multiple items at a time by holding the control key and selecting them in the viewport, or control and alt to make a box around the items you want to select. If you select anything extra, like this ground tile, you can hold control and click it to deselect the item. The outliner can be used to select or deselect items in the same way. Then, with all of these items selected, you can delete them as normal with the delete key. This item I kept is a little too big, so I can use the scale tool to resize it. You can find the scale tool in the top right of the viewport or click the R key on your keyboard. If you click on any of those lines that show up on the item, you can scale it in one of three directions. You can also click and hold in the center to scale the item in each direction uniformly. This is how you can find props or items from Fortnite to use, but you might want to get custom content in your project. One way to do this is by using Fab. To access Fab, click the button on the toolbar at the top, or right-click the content browser and open it. Fab gives you access to both paid and free content, and you can search and filter for specific things you might want for your project. For example, if I wanted a wagon, I can search for one and find a free wooden wagon. Then I can drag it into the level just like I did the gallery earlier. This will download the asset and import it into the project, which could take a bit of time. You can also click on the asset to add it to your content browser, or if the asset allows it, add the source files to the project, letting you edit the asset yourself. Another type of asset you may want to use is one you've created yourself. The first step to importing your assets is to create a folder where they will live. I'll make this folder called Meshes, then create a folder in here for my item, a hay bale. Now, if I right-click this folder and click Import, File Explorer will open and I can navigate to where my asset is. After selecting it, an Import menu will appear. I'll use the default settings to import this asset, but this is an important step to consider as you import assets since different settings can be important depending on the kind of asset being imported, or to keep memory costs down. You can check out the documentation online to learn all about importing assets. Once imported, if you double-click your mesh, the Static Mesh Editor will open. The asset doesn't look exactly right, since it doesn't have a material or texture assigned to it. To import them, click the Add button, go up to Import, select the textures you want, and then hit Open. Once everything is imported, hit Save. Materials will be covered more in depth than a later part of this course, but if your asset was packaged with the material correctly, you should be able to drag it out into the world properly. Now that my asset is imported and working correctly, I can drag it into the world like normal. If I wanted to duplicate and place tons of hay around, I can hold the Alt key and use the Transform tool to move it into a new direction, creating a new hay bale. This asset was one I hadn't imported into a project yet, but once you start working in UEFN, you may have multiple projects, with different assets in them already set up for use in the editor. For example, this is a game called Tilt and Boom, and this pirate ship is a custom asset I've already set up correctly. I can take the pirate ship from this project and migrate it to another by finding its static mesh, right-click it, go to Asset Actions, and click Migrate. Then, find the content folder of the project I want to move it to, in this case, the First Hour project, and confirm. After migrating, if I open the first hour project, I should find the newly migrated asset. One thing to know is that these are just static meshes. They won't be interactable in the game. To make them interactable, you can right-click in the content browser and click a blueprint class. From here, choose whether it should be a prop or a static mesh. In this case, a prop since we want it to be interactable. And then I can rename this blueprint to call it Pirate Ship. Opening this up, I can choose the Pirate Ship mesh and edit the settings for it. One thing to know is you have to do this for any custom asset you want to be adjustable in the Creative Edit mode. Without this step, you won't be able to move it around with the phone tool as normal. It's important to keep things organized in our outliner now that I have more assets in my level. I can right-click in the outliner to create folders and keep assets organized into different categories. Now that the pirate ship is all set, 
Let's go ahead and look at how you can playtest this project inside of Fortnite itself. 